Um, so this unboxing is a picture book about, um, I don't know if it's about Zora Neale Hurston. Um, it is, who is it by? It is by the author of Their Eyes Are Watching God. It is a, and it's adapted by Ibram X. Kendi, who um, is, you know, I think everyone's read um, his books. Um, and illustrated by Lovies Wise. So Ibram X. Kendi has a lot of um, sort of books about racism. And then he did some, like a board book that um, I, is really great. Let me see if I can get the title of that. Anti-Racist Baby. Yeah, that was like, uh, like you know, a really big book. Um, um, like a bunch of books about how to be an anti-racist. I think adults and children. And then, oh, this is interesting because, you know, Zora Neale Hurston, I first learned about her in college when I took a, like a you know, literature class. Um, and I read Their Eyes Were Watching God and I was like totally blown away. And that was the first time I ever knew about her. But more recently, I'm noticing like a resurgence in interest in her work um, and in the kidlet sphere. So there's a whole series of like middle grade, middle grade YA, I think it's more like older middle grade about Zora Neale, Zora Neale Hurston. And then from that series, they started doing uh, picture books as well, at least one. Um, and so here is another, because I feel like Zora Neale Hurston is like a writing luminary that, you know, not too many people know about, and especially not about her as an author, as a, you know, like her, her, you know, biography, her story. Um, so it looks like this is another one, um, maybe using her own words. I'm not quite sure. Oh, wow. So she was born to parents who fled slavery and the trail of tears. Um, and this is the story of the transformative and radical devotion between generations of indigenous and black people in America. Whoa, that's like, I don't even know how you do that. Whoa, what a beautiful spread though, right? Magnolia flower. Magnolia trees, they, they, they used to, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them that bloom um, where I used to live in the South End. And they're so beautiful. And they all, to me, they always marked, um, you know, like spring. Like they were the, one of the first to, bloom and just you know after a whole winter of snow so is it poetry yeah it looks like it might be free verse poetry um so i don't know is, she, is he taking is he taking like her poetry and telling the story or is he i'm not quite sure exactly um the connection to Zora Neale Hurston? Unless it, is it her story? Maybe, it's, maybe it's a, kind of the story of her family. Um, I'm like a little bit confused. So is Magnolia, who is Magnolia? I mean, is it like a, a symbol of a story about Zora Neale Hurston? Or is Magnolia an actual person in this story? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to read it more carefully than flipping through it. But it is really gorgeously illustrated. Isn't it? Yeah, it reminds me of um, the Water Protectors illustrator. The work is just like, it's so, it's kind of like dazzling, you know? So here Magnolia is a person. So I don't know, I think, I think it's a story, an actual story of this man and this woman who are, you know, you know, the similar story to Zora Neale Hurston's parents. So the father is, you know, having some kind of 
uh, slavery uh, history, either escaping from it or, um, you know, ancestors were enslaved. And then um, an indigenous woman who also um, is going, you know, like these are, you know, very terrible times in history. Um, also forced from her home um, during Trail of Tears and somehow um, the connection between the two. Um, I mean, there's also a great, for that kind of story, there's a really great picture book. Um, I'll put it in the down box, but it's about how the um, Native Americans would, you know, kind of give sanctuary to run a runaway um, slaves. Um, and it's by Tim, um, oh God, I'm blanking on his name. Um, and it's Chitbo, or I, I forget the exact title. I'll put that. Um, and that's a true story, I believe. So, and it sounds like uh, these people, um, I mean, that this was, it was more than just a one-off and they created communities that were sort of biracial. It seems like he's talking about here maroons. Um, but it's, um, I guess at its heart, this is a love story um, and a love story that, you know, was repeated in history, um, you know, more than one couple um, besides Zora Neale Hurston's parents, but just sort of a, during the time where um, I guess also, you know, multiracial marriages were illegal, but I think maybe if you were um, African and Native American, um, that skirted it because it was really more, you couldn't marry someone white. I just know, I just know from, um, uh, that uh, Donna Higuera book about um, like Mexican and I think black or was it Asian? Like just how, um, you know, from, you know, for hundreds of years, um, interracial marriages were illegal in the United States. Um, and that was during this time. Anyway, it looks just like a beautiful book with a lot of um, unknown history um, and food for thought. So thank you. Um, who sent this to me? Amistad, Books for Young Readers. Thank you for sending it to me. Um, and thank you for watching and listening to me ramble.